The Prime Minister says he's confident the DUP will back his new Brexit deal for Northern Ireland and he's urged his MPs to give the Conservative Party time and space to consider, to consider it. Well, let's talk to former UKIP Brexit Party leader Nigel Farage, one of the most prominent faces behind the whole Leave campaign, who, as you can see, joins us this morning. Good morning. Good to see you, Mr Farage. Um, Brexit is done. The final piece of the jigsaw has been placed. You can hang up your gloves. It's all it, over. I know. It sounds great, doesn't it? I thought Rishi Sunak's performance in the House of Commons and the way the Conservative Party clutched it to their breasts, saying, this is it, it's the turning point, there's a a path open to victory at the next election. The trouble is... It's not, uh, uh, it's not just the Conservative Party. I mean, if you look at the, the newspapers which have supported you, look at today's Daily Express. The Express says Rishi's Brexit boost for the UK. The Metro said that um, time to turn the oven on on the, um, the Brexit-ready deal. So even the papers who have supported you over the yeah. last few years, they, they are saying... Brexit's done. Can't you just retire now? Well, look, I mean, when you, you, your when work you, is done, Nigel. When you look at what the PM said, how could you not support it? It sounded terrific. Mm -hmm. He'd won these amazing concessions. And, hey, what a victory. We can eat the same sausages on sticks at cocktail parties in Belfast and London. All right, I'm being sarcastic. But it looked like... Well, no, actually, that's factually true now, it, isn't yeah, it? But it looked like he'd achieved major <laughs> change. The problem is that the legal eagles have been at work overnight in Brussels, and Brussels have also produced a document... So we had the government document, nice and slick and shiny. Now the Brussels documents have come out overnight, which show that actually, to put it politely, Rishi Sunak has oversold what he's achieved. So the Daily Express has been duped? I think a lot of people would. The Mail's got it wrong. I think everyone's got it wrong. The Metro's got it wrong. Only everyone. Nigel Farage has got it right. Well, because it... No, as you said yourself in the introduction, it takes time. We have to pour over this mm. and look at the legal basis. When I first heard what he had to say, I thought, this is terrific. But we're now beginning to understand that the so-called break, the storm break, the veto that he talked about, will only apply to changes to existing legislation, will not apply to any new EU rules mm. directly applicable in Ireland. When he claimed there was great victory on VAT, on excise duties, well, actually, the number of items on VAT we have flexibility on is minute. Most of them... They have to be immobile, don't they? They have, yeah, like, like a heat pump on your house. But most products still will be under the ambit. So, basically, okay. basically, basically, okay. Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland, yeah. to all intents and purposes, is still part of the European Union. That's the point. OK, but the, the problem is, Nigel Farage... Yeah. ..and I think Andrew Neil uh, has, been, has accused you of nitpicking over it. The fact of the matter is, Northern Ireland is on the same piece of geographical uh, territory as Ireland, which is part of the European Union. Nobody wants to put a hard border of checks between Northern Ireland no. and Ireland. Therefore, the border had to go somewhere. It went down the Irish Sea. Nobody likes that, particularly the DUP. So was someone somewhere has got to Look, compromise, and that's what Rishi Sunak has done. Of course, it's not the perfect no, 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 deal no, no, no. for you. Here's the point. But don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Here's the point. Monsieur Barnier, who was their chief negotiator, was a damn sight cleverer than Theresa May or Ollie Robbins, our chief negotiators. He realised, in playing a game of chess, if he could get us to accept that there might be a risk to the Belfast Agreement, to the peace process, if we, if we accepted there was a risk, he would then... Outwit us. It would have been a next... risk. No risk at all. Border, border no, risk, checks... no risk whatsoever. And I'll tell you why. There. I'll tell you why. Even before Brexit, we had a different currency, different excise duties, mm. different tax rates. There was no problem there. Mm. I was in the European Parliament in 2017. Yes, but they, this, and we're they talking produced, about goods. And they aren't produced we? we're talking a about goods they going produced, over a border. They produced a report for frictionless trade. Mm. There are things called trusted trader schemes. Look, the real point is this. Why are the DUP upset? Mm. Because successive British Prime Ministers haven't told them the truth. Mm -hmm. Boris Johnson said there will be no border in the Irish Sea. There was one. Mm -hmm. Boris Johnson said if anybody has to fill in customs forms, get them to ring me in Downing Street. And he'll chuck them that in the bin. That wasn't true. Here's the problem. All right, we start off from a bad place. If the DUP think that Rishi Sunak has not told them the truth in the last 48 hours, they're not going to sign up. So you were fooled in 2019. Did you make a mistake? Do you know, when Boris Johnson came back from the renegotiation, the headline... Headlines of the newspapers were exactly the same as the ones that you're quoting to me this morning. 
I stood up and said there are major problems with this, and I cited Northern mm -hmm. Ireland and what would happen. Sure. But nobody was in a, nobody was in the mood to listen because we sure. wanted to move on. So just to be clear, because you know, I was wondering if you were about to retire. You're clearly not. <laughs> in 2019, mm. you um, and the Reform Party, of which you're still a senior yeah. figure, didn't stand candidates against Boris Johnson's Conservatives because you trusted him. You now feel well. that you've been duped by Boris Johnson. Rishi Sunak, you say, is not being straight. Are you going to be setting out at the next general election to get people to vote for your party, not the Conservative Party? Is your t goal to deny Rishi Sunak a Conservative majority? Well, you're quite right. In 2019, we gave Boris Johnson a free pass because I think we were all suffering with Brexhaustion. Let's just get this over the line, let's leave. And that's why I did what I did. I, some mornings I wake up and regret it, but I think on balance it was the right thing to do. So a free pass in the, the next election for Sunak? Oh, look, I think, the, I think the Conservative Party have led us down in the most appalling way. I think the Labour government will take us back closer to EU rules. And look, I'll be honest with you, you know, I wanted, for over a quarter of a century, us to be an independent free country. I thought we had the ability to govern our own nation properly. But you're polling right more moment, than the Greens. Doing that. But you're polling more than the Greens, um, yeah. your, uh, um, more than the Lib Dems, pretty much. Are you standing Reform candidates the against the Conservative Party in the next election? 100% yes, no exceptions. OK, thank you. Nigel Farage, thank you very much indeed.